Get ready to soar through the skies of innovation as we unpack the game-changing details behind the B-21 Raider, featuring brand new images and exclusive computer animations that bring this sixth generation marvel to life like never before. Picture this, in December of last year, the world stood still as Northrop Grumman pulled back the curtain, unveiling the full-scale prototype of the B-21 Raider. This sixth generation marvel is raising the bar for all other bombers in the sky, today and tomorrow. The Raider is nothing short of a generational leap in technology and aviation. Fast forward to early 2023, when additional snapshots surface, shedding more light on the Raider's intricate design and hinting at its unparalleled capabilities. Now, after months of anticipation, brand new images have been released. And today, we're diving into what these revelations mean. But we're not just talking about it. You'll see exclusive animations that show you what it all means. I've been following the development of the B-21 on this channel closely, from before the December reveal until today, to tell you the story of this unique bomber. Along the way, I've made some guesses and created these animations, and sometimes I've been way off the mark. But that's part of the fun in chronicling in what is perhaps the most secretive and revolutionary aircraft of this generation. Getting to the new photos and what we've learned about them, the first thing that stands out are the window designs. While we saw the windows in the December reveal, these photos show us different angles that tell us a couple of things. First, their unconventional shape and layout seem to indicate that the windows appear to be designed to eliminate seams and joints which further reduce its radar cross-section, or RCS. Additionally, these windows will allow the pilots good visibility during aerial refueling and some side-to-side -side visibility, but the airplane will likely be flown mostly with some kind of augmented reality. This is sort of like flying in VR, where the pilots will rely on on-screen displays or even their helmet displays to see outside of the aircraft. The F-35, already does this with its helmet system, and NASA's X-59 Quest is flown by means of an Enhanced Flight Vision System, or EVS, which consists of a forward-facing 4K camera. Staying in the cockpit area of the Raider, we also notice the new markings for the ejection seats, indicating that the Raider's pilots sit in a low-profile stance which further reinforces the fact that the forward and down visibility will likely be minimal. The low profile stance is almost certainly done to help reduce the Raider's RCS, making it even more stealthy. Moving outward from the cockpit, we also know that the air intakes sit very low in the fuselage, especially when compared to how the B-2's inlets are positioned. Both aircraft have the inlets above the wing, which will help maintain its stealth profile when flying at high altitudes but the Raider's inlets are noticeably more flush with the airframe. Remember that even today, the B-2 Spirit remains one of the most stealthy aircraft in the sky. With these design upgrades, the Raider will become even more invisible. What we still don't know at this point is if these inlets will house a total of two or four engines, but given the smaller size of the Raider, my guess is that the final version will have two adaptive cycle engines. This will allow for more onboard fuel storage, thereby providing greater range capabilities. The new photos also show various markings added to the prototype, most notably the serial number 0001, indicating that the aircraft shown in the prototype is the first built Raider. Current estimates are that there are a total of six B-21s in various stages of construction. The latest photos we've seen appear to be dated July 31st, which is when Northrop announced that they had powered up the Raider for the first time. Interestingly, there is one viewpoint we haven't seen from the B-21. While we've seen the front and now the side views of the jets, we haven't seen the rear of the aircraft. Why is this? The most likely explanation is to maintain secrecy for as long as possible. If you recall, when the B-2 was revealed in 1988, the press was invited to view the aircraft from the front and sides only. However, during the reveal, the B-2 was fully pulled out of its hangar, 
and an innovative reporter was able to rent a Cessna and get overhead shots of the back of the B-2 Spirit. In the December reveal last year, Northrop had apparently learned its lesson and only towed the B-21 partially out of the hangar, before stowing it back inside. The fact that the rear of the aircraft has not been publicly shown indicates that the design could provide other nations which are developing their own stealth bombers, such as China, clues for their development. In a similar way, designers of ground and air-based radar systems could be looking for insights as to how to track the aircraft based on what the plane form looks like. Surprisingly, from a project perspective, the radar appears to be on schedule. The Air Force has stated that they want to purchase a minimum of 100 examples of the radar, which is substantially more than the 19 B-2 Spirits that are in operation today. The Air Force is hoping that the eventual size of the B-21 fleet will number over 200. It's not yet known if the radar will be made available for export, but Australia has expressed interest in the bomber. Everything about the radar has been designed with future expansions in mind, from its open architecture software code to the modular construction methods that are being used. Next, let's talk about the exterior skin of the airplane. Everything we've seen about the radar also shows a much lighter coating than we've previously seen on other stealth aircraft. The lighter coating represents a new generation of radar absorbing materials or RAM coatings, which promise to be more durable and longer lasting than the RAM coatings used today on the B-2. If you recall, all B-2s must be kept in climate controlled hangars to preserve their RAM coatings and have to have all these coatings reapplied almost after every mission flown. The B-21 Raiders coatings should allow for the aircraft to perform several missions before reapplying them and allow for the Raider to be forward deployed even outside. This would give the Raider global strike capability just about anywhere within two hours. The lighter coating shown in the B-21 Raider is likely an evolution of the chrome or mirror-like finishes we've seen in the past year on several stealth platforms recently. F-22 Raptors, F-35 Lightnings, and even F-117 Nighthawks have been spotted with these unconventional chrome coatings. I've done videos on these configurations, links in the description below. Along with the aforementioned benefits, these lighter coatings are likely some form of counter against passive tracking systems, such as infrared search and track or IRST which some claim can also detect stealth aircraft better than traditional radar. And while the coatings seen on the B-21 are not chrome, they are likely an evolution of what has been tested and again represent the latest in radar absorbing material technology. Another reason for the white coatings could be an old and serve a somewhat grim purpose. For decades, some strategic bombers have been painted in anti-flash white. The thinking is that the white color is to reflect at least some of the thermal radiation from a nuclear explosion, thereby protecting the aircraft and crew. Furthermore, these lighter coatings will also make the bomber harder to visually detect, even during the day. So we can speculate that daytime strikes at altitudes above 60,000 feet will be possible. The Northrop B-21 Raider represents the latest in American technology and innovation, and carries with it the strategic vision of the United States and her allies. As we learn more about this incredible aircraft, I will continue to make videos with updated animations to keep you in the loop. And finally, it appears that the Raider is being produced at Northrop's infamous Palmdale facility at Plant 42. I'm sure it's just a coincidence, but some of you will appreciate the interesting choice of the number 42. If you do, finish the sentence, so long and blank, in the comments below. If you enjoy this video, then unstealth that subscribe button and mash the bell so you don't miss a single video when it comes out. More content is on the way. Now you know.